lumpiness, bad on mashed potatoes, and on your hard surface models. If you're struggling to get rid of those dents or those lumpy spots on your hard surface modeling in Maya, I'm here to show you how to fix it in the video coming up. What's going on you 3D modeling beasts? This is JL Musi and today we are talking about how to get rid of lumpy or uneven surfaces within hard surface models. So how this video came about was uh, Tad contacted me and he was struggling on one of his projects to get rid of some uneven uh, surfaces on his hard surface models. So I told him I'd help him out and I'm gonna be showing off pretty much his uh, helmet, his sci-fi helmet, and how to go about uh, basically fixing some of those areas. I thought this was a great video to do because this is something that I struggled with when I first started doing my hard surface models, and I'm pretty sure that at some point you did too, where you start modeling and you start adding divisions, you start moving and pushing uh, geometry around, and things look good from far away, but as soon as you hit that three key and you subdivide your mesh and you look at it, you start turning around, that light starts hitting your model, you start seeing all these little dents in your model. And you know, at this point, you're looking at it at a real dense mesh and you might be wondering what's the next step, how do I fix this? This is a very common issue, so I'm gonna show you kind of my workflow on fixing those uh, nasty dents within your model. If you're new around here, I do my uh, modeling tutorials all the time, so please consider subscribing. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. All right, so before I get to the model itself, uh, what I'm gonna do is just start with a real simple object. I'm gonna go ahead and just get a something with some curvature. So I believe I will just start out with a cylinder. So I'll go ahead and do a polygon primitives cylinder. I'll get me a cylinder here. I'll enable my uh, rotate tool if it wants to show up. If your transforms ever disappear uh, nine times out of 10, if you reset the tool, you'll get it back. Sometimes just things get out of whack. And if you ever have that problem, boom, there's a solution. So uh, I'm just gonna zoom in here. So hold down J and you see that uh, these values here, they're jumping around 15 degree increments. So that's gonna work for me. Uh, now I'll go ahead and just kind of um, select some faces here. And then I'll go to uh, select and I'll go to inverse and I'll go ahead and delete these right here. So I'm gonna take you through the process of what actually gets you in trouble in the first place. So here we have a perfectly smooth surface. If we subdivide this, this is gonna look pretty uh, gorgeous, right? So uh, this looks good. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple edge loops here with the multi-cut tool. And I'm gonna go ahead and just um, do a little bit of modeling here. So I'm gonna just enable my move tool. I'll hold down control, middle mouse click to move off the normals of those edges. So I just wanna go ahead and get a little bit of some curvature here. So maybe we have an object that looks like this, right? So this looks pretty uniform, pretty good. Um, let's add a couple more edge loops here. So I'm gonna add one here. I'm gonna add one here as well. And then um, what I'm gonna do is, you know, we start the process and maybe we just, uh, we're moving verts here. We're trying to position things. We're looking around. We're trying to establish our shapes. So we make these little moves in the verts that don't seem like a big deal at first, right? Uh, maybe we go in here and we just kind of, we're modeling. Uh, we're not really being that precise. So we make these little movements here that are pushing and pulling off the surface that actually looks pretty good, right? And this is what really just starts the uh, dents that we get or the lumpiness that we get in our models, right? And then to add insult to injury, right? Uh, what we tend to do is maybe we're not paying attention and then we start adding more subdivisions, right? And adding the subdivisions, now we're just compounding that problem because these new edges that we're adding is only building off existing topology that's already causing lumpiness, right? So now if we go here and if we enable um, 
our subdivision mode, right? We, we could see that we have a little bit of lumpiness. Now, this is uh, with the Lambert, it's a pretty flat material. So it's really not that obvious. And that tends to happen a lot because a lot of people work with Lamberts and then they figure out towards the end when it comes to shading and lighting, put a blend or a fong or something a little bit more shiny and all these uh, imperfections really light up. So what I like to do when I'm working with hard surface modeling is actually just use a blend right off the back because it'll actually reveal all the imperfections that you are creating, right? So I'll go ahead and shift right click and I'm gonna go ahead and do a, I'm sorry, not shift right click, just right click here. I'll do a sign uh, new material and we'll go ahead and get a blend. And now you see the blend gives us this nice specular highlight that as we start to turn, and I'm gonna go here to expert mode just to get a little bit more visual real estate, but this really makes our lumps really obvious. Like right here as we're orbiting, uh, we see kind of a, a break in that specular highlight. And that's a clear indicator that even without looking at our wireframe that there's an issue there, right? Especially if this surface is supposed to be uniform. So what can we do to fix this? So let's go ahead and uh, check out Tad's model, something that's a little bit more complex. And let's look at how we would go about fixing a model that already is pretty much done. And we wanna go ahead and get rid of lumpiness. So uh, overall, um, the model looks really, really good. Uh, if we enable our uh, wireframe on shaded, uh, all these details actually are excellent. A nice topology uh, on a three key here. They're deforming perfectly, right? Uh, but here it's kind of where he got into a little bit of problems, right? Uh, with the uh, lumpiness here. So I'm gonna go ahead and focus on some areas of this. I'm obviously not gonna just remodel this uh, whole helmet, but um, I will kind of just fix some parts and hopefully that will drive the point across. So I'm gonna take this guy here. I'll hit Shift I, which is gonna go ahead and isolate this. And what I wanna do is just work on half of this. So what I'll do is I'll go into edge mode and I'll double click this guy here double click this edge here, I'll shift click and do a detach, detach components, right? And then now if we switch back to object mode and we do a mesh and separate, right? Now these are two separate meshes. So this is gonna be our uh, before and here's gonna be our after. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of work on this side. So the first thing that if you kind of, in this scenario, what I would think about doing is just reduce some geometry, right? So I'll go in here and you wanna think about the filler uh, edges uh, more uh, than actually um, edge loops that are holding up border edges or, or defining some edge flow, right? So here, Right, like I probably wouldn't wanna delete this edge here, right, because this edge is actually um, doing some edge flow work. Uh, neither would I wanna go ahead and get rid of this guy, because this is this border edge, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just, with those things in mind, I'm, I'll start with this one, right? And then I'll select every other edge, and I'll really just start reducing some of these um, poly counts here, right? I'll go ahead and delete this guy here as well. Uh, this guy here is, looks like it's causing some issues, right? We see that we're kind of peeling off from the geometry. So I'll go ahead and select this one. And I think this is kind of a good place to start. Now I'm gonna go ahead and delete. Now make sure that when you wanna get rid of edges that you're holding down control when you do delete because if you only hit delete, you see that if we go to vert mode, we still have all these hanging verts, right? Now, what you could do is if you do have hanging verts, you could just select everything and hit delete and they'll get rid of them too. But just, um, you know, just so you don't get in trouble or you don't leave any hanging verts uh, when you are on edge selections that you want to kill, just hold on control delete and they'll do both at the same time, right? So now we're, we kind of backtracked a little bit, uh, but this is starting to... Uh, just to form or smooth out a little bit better when I hit the three mode, right? So from this point, we see that we have some of these little jagged um, edges here or, or, or these vertices that are kind of popping out. If, if you're just looking here, let's go ahead and go to expert mode here, just to have a little bit more real estate. But you see that this guy's kind of spiking this way, this guy's spiking this way. So what we need to do is actually just move this geometry around, but we probably wouldn't want to just get the move tool 
So with the move tool in its default state, it's hard to really evaluate if you're actually uh, adding to the problem, meaning if you're pushing or pulling off the surface, right? So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna enable the modeling toolkit and we have something called transform constraints, right? So what we wanna do is actually slide this topology around the surface. So I'll go here to transform constraints within the modeling toolkit and I'll make sure that surface slide is enabled. And now you see that no matter how hard I try, I'm not, I can't really peel off that silhouette, which is a good thing for sliding geometry around and, re and really just realigning uh, vertices and edges. It's kind of annoying having this move gizmo all the time or having to switch between the move tool and the select tool. So what we can do is go here within the modeling toolkit and once we enable the move tool, you see that we have a tweak option available. So basically what the tweak does is it combines the select and the move tool into one motion, right? So now if we have a tweak marquee enabled, we could basically select and actually move without any gizmos involved, which I kind of like this in certain scenarios, especially when you're moving a topology around. Uh, it's just a really nice feel for this, right? So I'll go ahead and move this guy here in this guy as well. So we're really just trying to get even spacing, right? So one of the tools that can help us to do this, now we could grab, uh, we could just go here back to marquee and we could grab all these edges and move them. But you see they're not really moving that uniform. So in this case, we can go ahead and just select this edge, kind of a double click to select that strip. And then instead of surface, we can go to edge, hit the move tool, and now that's gonna move along that surface. That edge is gonna move a lot better instead of uh, just kind of having those verts having a mine of their own. Is maybe I can grab this strip as well and just kind of move it here, right? So uh, the good thing about this too is that not only will it help you have an even mesh in Maya, but if you take this into a package like ZBrush and you're subdividing this to get some density in there for you be able to sculpt, uh, having just really that nice uh, even spacing will make sure that your sculpting detail is actually very even as well. We're gonna go ahead and just kind of do the same thing here, right? This guy's kind of pulling forward. So I'm gonna grab this edge here and I'll select that uh, span and I'll kind of move it here. And then I will move this guy over as well. So I'll go here and I'm kind of going to focus on this area. So I'll delete this. And I'm actually not going to worry about this because I will be end up, um, I'll, I'll actually end up rebuilding this part. So I'll move this guy here and I'll go ahead and change over to surface and just kind of nudge it over here. So here I'm going to add an edge loop. Um, and we could just add a edge loop with the uh, multi-cut here. Now, traditionally, when you add an edge loop or w w when you add an edge loop by default, you're going to get something like this, right, which is actually flat. So anytime that you add topology to a flat surface uh, and don't move it, it's going to basically cause uh, some more lumpiness or just kind of this even area because what's going to happen is that now this is a straight edge and you adding this um, This here is kind of reinforcing that straight edge, right? So essentially you'd have to go back in here and move it now now Maya does have some built-in tools that will save you this step of Manually moving this right so if you manually wanted to move it probably the best way is to just double click this guy here hit W hold down control middle mouse click and you could push and pull along the normal, and that's kind of a great way of just breaking up that flatness, right? Uh, the other way is before we even add that edge loop, right, we could go into our multi-cut tool, and you see an edge flow option, right? So now if we do control to enable our edge loop and middle mouse click, you see that it's gonna go ahead and push along the normals there, and it's gonna average that out, and we'll get some of that roundness back. Asterix here is sometimes this option will work on some areas, but it'll jack some areas up. So you kind of have to use it on a case by case scenario or just kind of once you add it, do a sweep and be mindful of what it's actually messing up. 
All right. So um, the other option would be is maybe you added, um, maybe you're here, right? And you added the edge loop and you kind of forget about it. And you want to, instead of pushing along the normals, the other option would be just kind of select the range that you want to work with. So under edit mesh, we have a tool called edit edge flow. And you see that um, basically you just kind of slide. It's either zero and then you could just basically gradually slide it. So that's a nice option to have as well that does a similar result. So the other tool that I like to use is actually a brush and it's under the mesh tools, sculpting tools, and it's called relax. So the great thing about this brush is that it respects your silhouette, but it does a great job at just getting that perfect uh, vertice spacing that is so great for getting rid of lumps like this, right? So um, you'll kind of get this here and you do have to have the mesh selected before you enable the brush. If we scrub from left to right with the middle mouse button, uh, you'll see that we are increasing and decreasing the radius. And I'm gonna go ahead and just start uh, relaxing some of these verts. And you see that it does a pretty a good job at just really just trying to uh, balance that out. Uh, and still respects pretty much our silhouette, which is really nice. Now, the one asterisk to this, right, the one caveat is that it will screw up. So anything within set border edges that you want to go ahead and, and respect, it'll jack them up, right? So that's something that you definitely want to go ahead and avoid uh, when using this tool is, you know, don't put it near any any uh, border edges. All right, so this looks pretty good, and uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and actually manually fix this here. So I'll go ahead and go to my face mode, and what we can do is pretty much select these guys here, and I'm going to kill this for the time being, and just uh, get rid of this these little edges here. Now if we double click, we should be able to delete this, right? So I'm assuming that um, you probably want a straight edge here. That's kind of how I'm reading the model. Uh, so now to straighten out this edge, what we could do is kind of select the range and then we'll enable our um, scale tool. And then we'll, if, if we go here, now you definitely want to make sure that uh, surface slide is off for this, right? And if we go here and we scale, you see that it's going to go ahead and get a perfect edge, right? So sometimes it's better to rebuild an area completely, like gut it out and uh, kind of extrude at the same time to really just get it uniform and nice and even. So I'm going to go ahead and get this guy and this edge here, extrude up, move, right? And then I'll go ahead and just kind of push and pull, just trying to match that same angle. And now we could extrude as well. And you know, these last couple of extrudes were all based off a straight edge, right? So our um, result's gonna be really, really crisp, right? And if we wanna go ahead and point it out a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and move it here, and that looks pretty good, right? And now what we could do is we could actually probably get rid of this edge here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select both of these edges here, and I'll go to bridge. There we go, so we filled that hole up. I'm gonna add one more edge and uh, I'll make sure that edge flow is on and add it in the middle. So that broke that evenness up. And then now I can go ahead and get this guy here, this guy here. We'll go ahead and bridge. So that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a try here for the time being and I'll fix that in a second. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just enable uh, edge slide, which I have hot keyed and I'll go ahead and just move this guy here. So give this a little bit more breathing room. I can go ahead and take this edge here. Same thing. Just kind of move it up, get this vertice. All right. So I went through and I deleted some more uh, geometry here, uh, move things around, really just kind of focusing on this part. Uh, I did kind of get rid of that try here and just kind of routed this. Uh, one thing that I noted here was kind of this uh, topology here um, was causing uh, some pinching, right? So if we look at this here, you kind of have all, all this pinching here because you have a pole um, with all these uh, edges sharing this one vert, right? So I kind of alleviated some of that here. And now if we uh, kind of smooth this out, 
uh, you see that uh, this looks uh, pretty, just kind of this area here uh, looks pretty smooth uh, compared to this right here, right? So uh, the last order of business is is uh, basically just introduce the holding edges again. All right, so uh, back here, let's go ahead and just um, reinforce some of these edges here. And I'll get the uh, multi-cut and I'll go ahead and add a edge loop here. And I'll add one here. And we'll have to do something about this one as, you know, obviously it's going to cause some pinching here. Then it looks like you want to reinforce uh, these two edges here. So what I could do is add a loop here. And so here towards the inner part. So I'll add one here as well. And um, just right off the back, I know this is gonna be an issue, right? Cause it uh, looks like we wanna blend into the helmet. So what we could do, it's right about here. Usually what I like to do is just delete one. So I'll, I'll, I'll control delete one. Now I just get the rest of the loop. I'll go in here and then we could just take this guy here and we'll merge that down. This looks pretty good. Um, this might cause uh, a little bit of uh, pinching here, right? So what we could do with this is we can take this edge here and then we could just enable our good old handy uh, edge slide, right? And we basically just kind of blended out of here. All right, so this is gonna cause, uh, same thing here, uh, we might get some pinching. So what we'd probably wanna do here is do a similar workflow where we take this guy here and we kind of slide it out the way, kind of towards the middle, and then we kind of leave it there closer. So, so I'm just gonna go here in a three mode, look at this, and then just kind of pan around, let the light hit it, and I think this looks pretty good, right? So we're gonna go ahead and go to three mode here and just kind of orbit to see what we got. Um, one thing is if you do need to add that topology back on, um, I would just do it carefully, right? So you can just go in here and uh, with the uh, edge flow on, uh, you can hold down control, middle mouse click, it'll add it right in the middle. And you see that that actually looks pretty good. So if you actually need that topology, uh, you could add it on quicker. So adding this topology back on, you're not multiplying your work because really all our marquee edges are already established nice and straight. So I'm just gonna undo that because I don't think I need it. Um, and then I'll go here to three mode. So I like to have the ambient occlusion enabled here, um, which just kind of uh, gives those uh, dark areas a little bit more pop. And that enable with the blend, you really just get the shadows, a little bit of contact shadows and some highlights popping. And it just uh, makes your uh, model and your surfaces a little bit easier to read. So I'm orbiting around here. And I think this looks pretty good to what we kind of had previously, right? So obviously I didn't do the whole model, but hopefully some of these tools uh, and workflows will help you get rid of the uh, lumpiness or uneven areas within your hard surface models in Maya. So that's all the information I have for you folks. Thank you so much for coming through my channel and spending some time with me and improving your hard surface modeling within Maya. Don't forget to like, comment, and smash that notifications button to be informed when I release my next Maya hard surface modeling video. So I will catch you next time.